Hey everybody, Greg Cazillo here, and I have an absolutely amazing photo for you this week. Uh, this photo I created when I was out in Las Vegas a couple weeks ago, and uh, it's in an area about, uh, I think it was 20 or 30 miles outside of Las Vegas called Red Rock Canyon. Absolutely gorgeous area. If you ever make it out to Vegas, you have got to go. It's just breathtaking. Now, this photo is also quite breathtaking, and I cannot wait to see it printed. I've already ordered the big print, and it should be framed and ready to go in a couple weeks. But uh, anyway, this itself, uh, when I even sent it to Jared, he's like, wow, that's an amazing photo. And uh, a lot of it is because of the editing. Um, this is the edited version, completely sharpened, completely retouched, completely everything. But this is what it started out with. Uh, very flat, not punchy at all. Uh, if you would print this, you probably wouldn't be really super happy with it. But you know what? You show someone this photograph, and they'll be like, Wow, that's a great photo. You must have a great camera. Well, anyway, this was taken with a Nikon D3X, which is about a 24 megapixel camera. Uh, with a Nikon 14-24 lens. I believe I shot it at f13 at about 200th of a second. And uh, as you see, middle of the day, uh, by the shadows, that kind of thing. It was probably 11 o'clock or something like that. So, anyway, how did I do it? We started off with this. Which isn't very good. Like I said, not very good. We can do a lot better. First thing which I'll do a lot is white balance. Um... As shot, usually the, the as shot or the auto setting from the camera is really good, gets me close, but I like to adjust. Uh, then what I'll usually do is just choose some of these drop downs here to see whether I, what I like better. In this case, I do like the shade, it's a little warm, same with the cloudy, a little bit too warm. So I'm just going to stick with the daylight. Now, my first trick that I'm going to show you is looking at the histogram. This histogram is a really, really good one for this particular image. Uh, we're not clipping any highlights as seen, or very, very few highlights as seen in that red area there in the top right hand corner, and a little bit there in the middle. And we're clipping very, very few blacks as seen in the bottom left on top of the tree. Uh, that it's evenly distributed all the way across, it's just we need to push these peaks up in order to make it really, really good. Because when you get the high peaks, that means more saturation and it looks better. So that's why I leave that histogram open because I, so I can see what I'm doing. Now exposure is definitely one of the things that I use a lot as far as adjusting my photos. Um, from experience, I know just a little bit goes a long way. Exposure works really, really well for saturating an image. Same with your brightness. When you darken it, you're saturating it. And as you see, look at my histogram. Okay, I'm pushing it to the left and the peaks are also getting higher. That means that I'm saturating and the colors are getting darker. Darker colors means more saturation. It's exactly what we want. At the same time, we also want more contrast. Now, one of my first things that I always do is tone curve. I like it at the least to have that strong contrast tone curve. I might have gone a little bit too far with this brightness setting and you always have to might always have to come back and adjust again but that's okay. Now next thing blacks. I like a really nice contrasty photo but in this particular instance I want a really uh, you know a ton of dynamic range uh, especially from a camera like the D3X with over 13 f-stops of dynamic range that, you, that can be captured uh, you know, in that single file at a ISO 100, which is what this was captured at, you really want to keep it all and get as much of it as possible and not clip that much. So we're not really going to do a lot of blacks in this particular image. Now, saturation will definitely pump it up a little bit. Not a whole lot. We're starting to get some greens here. Um, vibrance works really, really good. Also, maybe just a little tiny bit, not a lot, really, really, not a lot, all right? I would much rather see more contrast. Contrast is going to affect the entire image, and clarity is going to affect just the mid-tones. Clarity is mid-tone contrast. So all this stuff in here 
in the middle of the image where you can't quite get enough contrast sometimes that's what that clarity slider is for mid-tone contrast works really really well sharpens it up don't go too far though because you get those halos kind of like when you're sharpening so that's not good now next step is our graduated filter this is a great way to get a super saturated sky I like my I'm gonna use exposure and I am going to drag this down to about here that's probably a good amount you might need to adjust it for your photo obviously adjust the horizon line uh, the other thing that this is going to help whoops the other thing that's going to help with this is the fact that the the haze this blue haze here uh, that's always uh, you know there along the ground you know a lot of scenic photos will help to cut that out a little bit so we're going to bring this down just a hair for under on the underexposure side now we don't want to go too far we don't want to make our clouds gray the clouds still need to be white and they still need to pop so it's just a little bit that's probably a good because the next step is going to make it even better let's get rid of that come down here to our HSL panel now luminance luminance is where it's at when it comes to adjusting colors and really making everything pop now we grab this little thingy I don't know what they call it I wish I did uh, and then we're gonna drag it right onto the image and we're gonna pick a color and we're gonna drag down now I could go really really way over the top but obviously I want to make the photo look real so I am going to stop right about there and as you see by the sliders it adjusts to blue and purple just a hair all the rest of them stayed right where they're at and that's exactly what I want come back up here to my basic panel and once again sometimes you need to go back and, and, and make another adjustment there it's just a hair brighter but now I want a little bit more of that sky so maybe I'll just hit the slider to give me a little more blue so there we go now it's looking really really good I think though we need a little more contrast because my colors down here aren't quite right maybe a little bit more brightness overall that's looking better looking I like that a little better in here let me come back up here and we adjust this one to bring my sky back down just a hair and again this is a multi-step process you really need to play with it look at it uh, put your own feeling into it what do you like what do you not like what do you want to see out of the final image and what or what did you see when you first shot it uh, that can really make a difference as to how you edit a photograph so that is looking pretty darn good we're still not clipping a lot of blacks we're not clipping any whites at all so maybe I'll even bring my exposure back up a hair so that I'm not losing anything there we go that's a little bit better and that gives me a little bit less blacks being clipped maybe I'll even go back on that just a hair still has a nice amount of contrast great photo uh, you know good color good saturation the whole nine yards but there's one thing missing and that is detail and sharpening you have got to sharpen every single photograph to make it look its best uh, there was a Lightroom tutorial that I did you can look that up uh, on frodosphoto.com that's a great tutorial shows you exactly how you how to do all of your sharpening um, there is a good preset to start with as a default preset uh, which is right in here somewhere if I can find it I know it's here I know it's here uh, sharpening there it is sharpening wide edges narrow edges scenic sharpening narrow edges scenic that will give us a little bit of a preset someplace to start uh, but I probably usually will like to go a little bit farther and then with my own masking and my own sharp, uh, detail uh, just to make it absolutely perfect and tweak it for this image so once again uh, here is my newly tweaked one and there is the final let me go back and show you before and after which is the ultimate there's the before 
And there's the after. How about one more time? Before, right out of the camera. And imported directly in Lightroom. That's how it looked. There's the after. Now, I've actually taken this preset and copied it to a bunch of other images. And this preset looked really, really good. Uh, the only thing that I would have changed would be the graduated filter for the sky because obviously my horizon line might have been on a different place or you know it could have been an up or down or around so I might need to adjust it but this preset looked really really good for this set of images and even images that were taken in other locations uh, during that same week with the D3X so I believe that is it one more time before and after this is Greg Cazillo for froknowsphoto.com. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the Fronos Photo forums. That is froknowsphoto.com slash froknows. We'll see you.